Hi everyone, thanks for watching another InfoSec Hub video. Today I'm going to show you how to set up OpenVPN on PFSense. But before that, I have to show you something because we're going to use the method OpenVPN. VPN, OpenVPN. So what can you do with a VPN, for instance? You can connect side to side. So your PFSense machine is a server and you can connect between servers. Uh, the PFSense machine uh, does the DHCP and all your uh, network clients are connected to it. Those network clients connect through PFSense uh, to the internet or through the VPN. So if you're sitting behind a Windows computer or a Mac computer, for instance, and you have a VPN tunnel on your PFSense machine, you might be able to grab some files from your brother, your mother, some other remote location over the internet in a fully encrypted tunnel. And that's also what VPN is used for. You can connect side to side. So from side A to side B on the PFSense machine. You can use VPN as a way to connect to uh, remote computers, remote access over the internet. And then VPN access the encrypting layer to encrypt all that data because the internet is in itself insecure. Also for IoT communications, let's say for instance, you have a security cam and it's a network cam, um, you also want to make sure that the connection between that camera and the client or the server is encrypted. So nobody can hack into this um, image and for instance, change the output. So you rob the bank and it still looks like nothing happens inside the bank. Just as, a, um, just as an example, what you sometimes see in the movies that they uh, switch the camera images uh, with a VPN, it will be much harder. VPN is an encryption layer. Uh, you encrypt your own um, data, virtual private network, over the internet. So that makes data transfers more secure. Uh, this is the website of OpenVPN, and there are many uh, options out there. But today we will look into OpenVPN. To make sure that we have the right set of encryption, we are going to use a certificate. A certificate can be used for websites to encrypt connections, but you can also use a certificate to encrypt um, yeah, a VPN, basically, to make it secure. Uh, so we first need to set up a certificate authority, and we go to System, we go to Certificate Manager, and here you see there's nothing in it yet because I just set up the system. Certificate authorities, we go to add. Um, we can give this any kind of name that we want. Um, let's just call it PFSense uh, root certificate authority. We can create an internal certificate authority. So this is kind of a self-signed um, certificate. Import an existing, you can also buy a certificate uh, or, or create an Im Im intermediate certificate authority. You can also buy certificates, but if you create one internally, then this machine will create it itself, a self-signed certificate, uh, so to speak. Um, so add the certificate authority to the operating system trust store. So you can do that. So you will not have those pop-ups again that uh, the browser doesn't uh, really um, recognize this as a valid certificate because it's self-signed. You can do that. But the most, uh, the things that are like the most important are here. So what kind of key type you want to use RSA or another one, the, um, the key length, uh, this is fine, but you can make it you can make it as, as high as possible up, up until the highest standards. But you have to understand this will slow down your connection because there's a lot of encrypting and decrypting going on. Uh, just for the sake of this tutorial, we keep it at uh, at, uh, at this rate. Uh, the algorithm SHA. This is kind of standard right now in 2021. But if you really want to make sure that uh, it stays secure and it gets more and more difficult to to hack you you go the higher the better but performance can be an issue so we also going to set it at a 256 um okay then the lifetime of days when the certificate uh is valid we can set it here in days 
the common name is an internal certificate. You can add country code uh, stuff. You need to fill it all in. You can, I think it's NL for the Netherlands state. You can all fill it in just like a normal certificate. Yeah, I will, I will just make up something. Um, organization, organizational unit, IT, and you save it. So now you created a certificate authority. That's step one, and it's a self-signed certificate. Um, you can do that. This, again, is not provided by any uh, certificate authority uh, that's out there, like a VeriSign or all the, uh, like, certificate. I, I will show you just a second. The authority. Um, SSL.com, for instance. So what's the certificate authority? It's really you, you buy one and that's internationally recognized because if you use a self cert, um, maybe no, I already have a tab open. Anyway, what I want to get at is here you see the connection is not secure. It is because inside of PFSense, uh, here it is an HTTPS connection, which is a secure connection, which means there's already a certificate assigned to this URL. But this is a self-signed certificate, so the browser doesn't recognize it as a secure connection. It is, but it's not recognized because it's not a real uh, certificate authority, if that makes any sense. If you go to, for instance, here in the, in the Netherlands, you go to KPN, you can buy a, a SSL certificate uh, to uh, encrypt HTTP traffic. And then it, it adds an S and you have a certificate here. Let's see, what, what more can we show you? No. That's it. Okay, so without further ado, let's just continue. So now that we set up the uh, certificate authority, we have to uh, make a certificate that uh, users can use, uh, clients can use to connect to this server. So we see the uh, certificate here. We can add one for the clients and we use an internal certificate again. Uh, and then we have to fill out the rest. So the certificate authority is pre-filled here. We only have one. You can have multiple certificates set up. And all the stuff that we filled in in the previous section of this video, it's already pre-filled here. Um, so that's all good. Uh, but it needs to make sure this is the server certificate. It's not a user certificate, it's the server certificate. Right? And then we hit save. So now we created the internal certificate for the server. Uh, so we first created the uh, certificate authority and then we created the uh, certificate for the server itself. So the server certificate and the certificate authority. Now we're basically ready to go to this option here, VPN, open VPN, and we go to the wizard. And here we select local, act, local user access right go to next we select the root certificate certificate authority we go to next and what kind of server what will it be it will be this certificate the server certificate that we just made so you need a ca this uh, certificate authority and the server certificate this is the actual certificate that you will use to encrypt the data between client and server next uh, and this is quite important. So it's it will always be on the LAN interface, right? Because it's a VPN, you use it. If you use this side to side, you have to select the WAN interface of that server because it will go over the internet WAN, point to point. So the interface should be WAN. Protocols that can be used inside the tunnel are UDP. Um, this is for streaming when you stream videos or uh over the vpn i must say udp should be enabled otherwise it will not work it will not work if you for instance open a 4k video 
on the server on the other side of the tunnel. You shouldn't select IPv4 only because it will not work. UDP. So you will miss certain parts sometimes when the connection is too heavy, when the load is too heavy, I should say. So the protocol UDP and IPv4 only. There are other options if you already implemented version 6 of IP, for instance, but keep it on default. Most uh, home users and even most offices only uh, went as far to implement IPv4 correctly. All right, the local port, it really depends on what you want to use. This is the default port. I would never suggest to use anything default because it's easier for hackers to, if they see your uh, use OpenVPN, for instance, uh, to uh, start sniffing at this port and poke around. So I would always suggest you uh, switch it to something else. Uh, the description, it's, um, let's say, for instance, remote users. Just act like this server will be used to uh, access a, yeah, a server on the, on the local area network, for instance. Okay, so that's that. Uh, TLS authentication, TLS keys, if you have a shared key, uh, let's see, authorization, should be authorization digest algorithm SHA-256, yes. What else we should put in here? Oh yeah, the tunnel settings. Local network is important. This is the network that will be accessible from the remote access point, right? This may be left blank if not adding a route to the local network through this tunnel of the remote machine, but this is generally set to the LAN network. Generally set to the LAN network. So here you find, here you put in the IP address or the IP, IP range. So For instance, this could be the VPN, or this could be your PFSense box, then you should add this IP there, uh, where it can find this, because this, we're now setting up the tunnel. Remember, end-to-end, -end, uh, but this is for remote users, so they should be able to connect to this IP where they find the VPN server. force all client generated traffic to the tunnel. So all the clients are forced to use this tunnel, this VPN tunnel, right? Specify the maximum number of clients allowed to connect to the server. Well, it really depends on how much users you have. Um, let's say for instance, you live in a household with four people and uh, three of them are adults i would just specify four just to be sure you have one more slot open but um it depends again on this uh, hardware configuration and, and and yeah your needs so number of connections that are allowed to this vpn client uh let's see dynamic ip Allow connected clients to retain their connections if their IP address changes. Yes. So we also want to make sure that the firewall uh, rules apply to this VPN connection. So we will make sure that the firewall rule here is ticked and the open VPN rule is ticked. Add a rule to permit connections to this VPN server process from clients anywhere on the internet. Yes. Okay. Add a rule to allow all traffic from connected clients to pass inside the v VPN tunnel. Both should be checked. Next. We finished. The configuration is now complete. To be able to export client configurations, go to system package, install open VPN client export package. Okay. Thanks for noticing. Uh, clients is server wizards local user access see if we can still go through there next search certificate everything is filled in so i'll go over it a little bit when 
protocols, local port, the description for remote users, data encryption negotiation, the tunnel network. So I was messing with the settings a little bit earlier, but this is the tunnel network. This is the local network because this is between two networks, number of connections, dynamic IP. Next. So now that everything is done, uh, now we have to configure the open VPN client for access on this PFSense uh, machine. Uh, so we go here to clients and we add open VPN clients. So let's see, uh, we're going to be in peer to peer mode, UDP, this IP address, layer four, uh, layer three tunnel mode on the interface WAN. Um, and here we have to add the server IP on this server port. And what else is here? The port proxy, proxy port is not the description. Um, yeah, just VPN client. All right. Okay. Username. This is a user authentication. Well, username could be VPN, for instance, and a password. Use security secure this was from the browser okay <clears throat> so this is how a client can connect with the username and password use the tls key and automatically generate the tls key uh from uh no yes this one this one the p of sense root certificate authority all right we will continue don't mention don't check this out keep it at sha256 mm, let's see gateway creation ipv4 only uh yes let's see if this can be saved i run to into a little bit of trouble with the server ip address so uh, what i fill in with the 10 10 10 0 whatever address i now made a domain name just for the sake of this tutorial so i put in uh, my site name here here server host address it didn't accept the one that i uh, filled in but now we are uh, we created here this uh, for the clients so server is in place for the clients is in place but what we need to do now is we can export uh, a package so that all our open vpn users can uh, can use this connection and for that we're going to go to system we go to go to package manager uh, and we're going to go to available packages and luckily we have internet access on this machine because it's been properly set up um and let's go to open vpn uh vpn right yes search so we're going to install this package we're going to confirm it So you need this package to be able uh, to connect to this VPN server. So this open VPN client package is now installed and the only thing left to do is add the VPN user. And to do that, we go to the uh, systems tab here and we have here user manager uh, and we have to add a VPN client with users. So admin, I'm the system administrator, 
but we should be able that other users can connect to this machine remotely um, they need to have an account basically on this machine so add uh, we're going to go to username which we already said earlier vpn uh, and here uh, All right, uh, the full name, VPN, this user cannot log in, <laughs> don't take that box. Uh, you can also, with this option later on, when you have multiple users and uh, maybe somebody was off-boarded, you can take this box, so he cannot use it anymore. Um, yeah, you have some user management here, right? VPN, username, VPN, password, he can connect with um this is all fine click to create a user certificate all right um descriptive name ppn name of the user certificate right we're going to use our own root certificate authority uh key length we keep it default uh okay lifetime Authorized SSH keys. Let's save this. And now, if uh, the user sets up an OpenVPN client on a system, uh, he's provided with the credentials VPN and his um, password, he can connect to this device. And this device is the PFSense machine, this is the router. Uh, slash firewall slash VPN uh, gateway um, and you can set up a VPN connection to this machine you can also set up VPN connections between machines point to point but this how I set this up is for instance you're uh, in a hotel room you have a PSense machine at home and you want to connect to your PSense machine with VPN so you can access the PSense machine maybe even um, reroute the internet back home so you use the internet from home and not from the hotel room i know of all these kind of possibilities i just can't explain them to you because i'm not a network administrator maybe you already figured out by now but this is basically how you set up vpn so you need a certificate you need a user certificate a server certificate and you need to go in here with open vpn to set it up servers clients type of server local user access right what else we got ldop lightweight um, domain access protocol and radius authentication protocols fine um this video is already quite long users certificate manager here we see the certificate authority here is the certificate issued uh, so the server certificate and the vpn user certificate um yeah that's basically it i hope it was useful um this is not easy to do but it's it can be done for free and that's the great thing and that's the power of it i mean p of sense is for free open vpn open which is open source can be used for free everybody can have their own vpn tunnel to back home to access files or whatever you want and it can be done through pfsense which is basically a super router uh, i want to thank you guys for watching this tutorial it's a long one i hope it was clear it's still difficult for me to kind of explain it uh, but i hope i did a good job Again, I'm not a networking guy, but uh, I thought that this would be interesting for you guys to uh, to see this. Um, I've been going on for way too long. Thanks for watching this video, and we hope to see you guys in the next one.